Hey, what's going on with everybody? Sean Stewart in the building. Hey, today I want to come on here. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about sales, right? Sales is life. My old mentor, Jacob Conan, used to say, hey, sales skills is life skills. If you guys want to make more money, if you guys want to get the girl that you want, maybe maybe you're a child and you're watching my video and, and maybe there's some Nike ears that you want. You got to be able to sell your parents. Everything in life is sales. And if you can get this concept of sales down, I promise you, you're never going to worry about a paycheck ever again. So today I want to talk to you about three simple tips on how to increase sales. Now, obviously, this is a little bit more of a professional side. I want to come on here and talk to sales professionals, right? Uh, 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 but but maybe 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 you want the girl, uh, you know? Maybe, maybe you want the movie tickets from your mother, uh, you know? Maybe you want the, the the Nike Air shoes from your father. You got to learn how to sell. And I'm going to give you three tips, and I want to get right into it right now. Uh, number one tip, and I and I see sales professionals. A little bit about myself, if you don't know me, I'm Sean Stewart. Um, I'm 18 or 19 years old. Um, I was 17 years old when I got into the sales industry. Did door to door for about a year, year and a quarter. Um, was very successful at it. Came to the financial industry, and and seven short months became the number one rep in the financial industry at my company. We're a Fortune 500 company, by the way. So I know what I'm talking about. So I want to come on here and I want to give you this information. Number one, state exactly what your intention is. What does that mean? Um, I see a lot of sales professionals uh, or sales amateurs, excuse me. Uh, when they get into a, a, a sales scenario, typically they like to dance around. They like to dance around exactly what, uh, what they're there for, right? And uh, you see this all the time in sales. Uh, you see people that they go into a sales uh, a negotiation and they say things like, you know, hey, you know, let me see if I can help you out with, you know, whatever. Or, you know, in my instance, I'm, I'm in the financial industry. We have a lot of financial representatives, a lot of financial advisors, a lot of financial salespeople. They like to say things like, you know, hey, I want to meet with you and see if I can consult and see if I can help you out. When all they really want to do is sell them life insurance. Or, you know, health insurance people going up to businesses saying, hey, I want to see if I can... Uh, you know, reduce taxes for your business. When in reality, all you want to do is sell them health insurance. Um, it's a form of lying, and that's why you're not getting the job done. Nobody feels ethical when they're not stating exactly what they're here to do. So when you get into a sales scenario, this is exactly what you should do. Hey, hey, Brian, my, my, my brother's report. Hey, Brian, hey, I'm here. Thank you for your time. Uh, my intention, I say this in, in, in scenarios, by the way, at appointments, in houses, at meetings, uh, with women, uh, with my mother on the phone, with my father, on the phone, whatever it is, I set the intention. Hey, my intention is, hey, my intention is, hey, the reason I'm here today is because I, I just got off the phone with somebody. Uh, it was a phone sale. I closed the deal on the phone and sent them the email to sign. But before I got into it, I said, hey, dude, Jay, the reason I'm calling you right now for two reasons. I gave him the first reason, but the second reason I'm calling you is, dude, I want to restore our business. He was somebody who was about to get a product from me, canceled out last minute. My fault, by the way. I said, hey, my intention, I want to restore my business with you. I want to see if I can earn your business and make a life insurance sale out of you. I, I said those words precisely. I said, hey, Jay, reason I'm calling you, I want to restore our business relationship. I want to see if I can get you life insurance and get you a sale. That's exactly what I said. When you say this, Professionals out there, when you say this, this actually gives you permission later in the sales scenario to actually ask for the close. Right? And that's the, that's why I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But when you say and set your intention, it actually gives you permission towards. There's so many things that happens when you set the intention. It gives you permission later in the deal to say, "Hey, dude, can I get you started now? Hey, dude, follow me. I want to get you set up with this deal. Hey, man, let's sign this contract. Let's get this thing on the road." Hey man, let's get this show on the road. Whatever, whatever your closing strategy is, it gives you permission, right? But if you go into the, the to the uh, to the uh, 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 the appointment or meeting or whatever, and you tiptoe around, I get this happens to me all the time. Amateurs, they sit with me. Maybe they want me to fund their business. Maybe they want to sell me a product. Whatever it is, dude, they, they don't state their intention. They ramble and ramble and ramble, and I'm sitting there like a stupid idiot, not knowing what I'm supposed to do. Guys, salespeople, stop doing this. Stop fumbling 
and do this to increase your sales. State the intention, right? There's so many more things that happen. I can make a separate video on what stating your intention in the sales scenario can actually do for you. There's so much, but state your intention. You'll surely find out all the benefits of what this can do for you. The second thing, guys, keep things simple and keep things concise, right? I'm a big believer that uh, sales are built on trust. Sales are built on rapport. Sales are built on valuable information. But sales are also built on efficiency, right? So, so when I'm meeting with somebody and I spend two hours with them just to get them a $15 a month life insurance product, guys, that's ludicrous. You don't want to do that, man. You want to be quick. You want to be simple, right? Another mistake I see people make is they're not simple, man. They talk and they ramble and they say things like this. And, 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 and I'm like, dude, I don't even know what that means. Is that even a word? You don't want to do that. You want to keep things simple. Kiss, kiss theory. I learned this when I was doing door to door. Kiss, keep it super simple, right? You learn this and that show the office. Keep it simple, stupid. Guys, they aren't lying. Keep it super simple. People like simple. I say this all the time. In my opinion, I believe life is very simple, but there's 8 billion people on earth. So what do people do? They confuse things. Guys, if you want to be a winner in the sales game and you want to increase your sales, which increases your income, if you're a business owner, you're not a business if you don't have sales. You know, maybe, maybe you're a solopreneur. You don't have a business until you have sales. If you want to increase this, keep things simple for your client, for your customer, for, the, for, the, for your buyer, right? They don't want to be confused. They want all the valuable information, of course, but you need to learn to find a way to keep that simple, right? Uh, and concise. All right, so guys, concise. This is pretty self-explanatory. You need to learn to, 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 to have this 30-minute pitch and this 30-minute presentation and, 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 and transform it into a 10-minute presentation. People are busy nowadays. Whether you believe it or not, whether you think they're not busy, whatever it is. Do people are busy nowadays? They need the information. They need it fast. You need to be in and out. I can run five appointments within one hour. Close four of them. I I, I do it all the time. People run with me. They say, dude, I can't even, oh my God. Okay. I'm moving and grooving. You got to keep things concise. You got to learn to take this pitch. Hey, reason I'm calling, bam. State the intention. Hey, boom, presentation. Thank you for meeting with me. Let me get the business. It should be that simple, that quick, right? Be simple, be quick. And you'll actually learn that when you state your intention and you keep things simple, Naturally, the process will be very concise, very short, very informative, very straight to the point and giving them exactly what they want. Don't conflate stating your intention, keeping things simple with being unethical. Tell them exactly what you need to tell them. Give them all the information, all the facts, but keep things simple. State your intention. You'll learn that it naturally becomes very concise, right? And the last but not least, the most important part, I watch a lot of Grant Cardone. I watch a lot, uh, excuse me, I watch a lot of Cody Askins. Patrick Bet David, um, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Tom Hopkins, all the sales giants. They say there's no money in selling, there's only money in closing. And that's something I wanna to talk to you guys about. Number three, ask for the close. If the sale is meant to be, the sale is up to me. A lot of people misunderstand this, this concept of closing. Um, they, they, almost, they almost believe that uh, the customer is going to close themselves. Um, well, let me rephrase that. They, they almost believe that the sale is just going to happen and the customer is, or the client is going to say, hey, yeah, sure, give me the pen, let me sign. Uh, one out of 10 times, it's probably going to happen. Maybe anomalies like that happen, sure. But when you ask for the close, that increases your chance. A lot of people, they don't ask for the deal. I should actually, to an extension, write the deal. Write it up, guys. Assume the deal, ask for the close and assume the sale. I learned this in door to door. Guys, you can't be weak with this. You say, hey, in my instance, if it's life insurance, hey, let me get you through underwriting. Maybe you're getting an annuity. Hey, let me get you started on this annuity. Hey, may, 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 maybe you're getting them an IRA if, you're, if, you, if you have your licenses. Hey, dude, let me get you started on this retirement account. You're just gonna be a thousand dollar brokerage fee. Tell them, ask for the deal. Say, hey, let me get you started with this, right? At the end of your presentation, many people don't do this. They give them all the benefits, they give them the price, they give them the value. They say, dude, this is awesome. And then they stop. Don't do that, guys. Say, hey, yeah, this is super awesome. This is exactly what you want. Hey, Brian, let me get you started on this, dude. 
Let me get you through underwriting. Hey, Joanne, let's stop, let's stop talking now. Let me get you started. Guys, I say this. I said this to a client. She was 63 years old. I said, hey, Cynthia, let me get you this deal. Let's do this thing. Boom. Deal closed, guys. You got to ask for the close. You got to write up the deal, right? I'm writing the deal when I'm closing. Another closing technique is asking for the important key information, right? So if you're in the financial industry, a key information is, hey, what's your social security number? Hey, what beneficiary would you like? You know, maybe you're selling a car. Hey, um, let's get you signed this line, right? Let's sign the agreement. Let's sign the contract, whatever it could be. You know, maybe maybe you're selling email marketing or, or SEO or whatever it is. Guys, get the valuable information, the key information to move the deal closer or yeah, closer to the, to the sale, to the complete sale. Um, ask for that, right? Hey, let me get you through underwriting. What's your social security number? Right? They give you that. Boom. That's a deal, right? Hey, what bank account do you use? Is it a fifth third? Is it a credit union? Hey, do you use Chime Banking? Right? Um, ask for the deal. Hey, do you use a MasterCard? Do you use a Visa card? Right? Say these things, guys. Get the get the buyer in a in a in a, uh, in a hey, okay, this guy actually wants to close the deal. Yeah, let's do this thing. Right? But people don't do this. They don't ask for the close. And guys, that, that's pretty much it. But I do want to give you guys a bonus tip. 3A, the second sale, right? Um, this is typically for advanced salespeople. I do this all the time. Uh, my brother has seen me do this. Uh, coworkers have seen me do this. Uh, I like to consider myself a professional at doing this. You know, hey, there's so much for more for excuse me more for me to learn. Um, one of the old philosophers said, "Hey, if there's one thing I know, I think it was Seneca or Aristotle. He said, if there's one thing that I know in life, it's that I know nothing, right? So I like to to, to brush up on my skills daily, daily, daily." But this one, I would consider myself an expert at this. The second sale. What is the second sale? Okay, cool. Hey, Brian, let's get you started with this life insurance product. I'll give you an example, right? Hey, Brian, let me get you started with this life insurance product. Okay, cool. What's your social? Okay, cool. Is it credit union or bank account? Okay, cool. Okay, okay, cool. Hey, by the way, for just $16, $15.12 extra, I'm going to attach an accidental death benefit writer. You're going to have $100,000 extra worth of coverage. It's only $15.12. Want me to get you started on this one too? Right? Because the second sale, closed by the way, second sale actually justifies the first sale. When you read this book called Seller Be Sold by Grant Cardone, um, I think it was that book, but it was also probably some other content that I've heard from him. He says, hey, um, the second sale actually justifies the first sale. Right, so my old uh, mentor Antonio Wilbur used to say, "Hey, Sean, when you go to the grocery store, or excuse me, when you go to the shoe store, do you buy one shoe or do you buy a pair of shoes?" And uh, I said, "A pair." He's like, "Exactly, right?" So when you make a sale, they should always come in pairs. And I'm like, "Oh, wow, interesting." So this is what I do all the time. I say, "Hey, dude, maybe they're paying fifty dollars a month, right?" Hey, you know. For an extra twenty-five dollars a month, I can get you critical illness life insurance. Oh, okay, sure. Guys, it gets them all the time. You get not—it's a win-win, guys. You get them more value, you get them more coverage, you get them more whatever you're selling them, and you also get to be compensated in return. And it's so simple; they will actually want to do the second sale more than they want to do the first sale, right? So, guys, I hope this helped. I hope this. Uh, uh, if you're a sales professional out there, I hope this really helped you guys out. Um, I hope you can take away some 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 key uh, points here. Um, drop your comments in below if you did. If you did gain a little bit of some value, guys, click the subscribe button. Grow my channel. Share it with your friends. Share it with a sales professional. Share it with your grandma. Share it with people, guys. Grow the channel. Hit the like, comment, subscribe. Um, I hope you guys are being blessed. Um, if you like this content, leave a comment below. I'm going to be dropping more of this information. I'll help you guys grow your business, help you guys grow your career or your profession. Uh, I hope this guy, I, yeah, I really do hope this helped. Um, I will catch you guys in the next video. Improve every day. God bless you guys. Let's do this thing.